Billy really wanted to cultivate all of his women so that they weren't called woman wrestlers, but they were called lady wrestlers. And I can remember that on some of my pictures it said lady wrestler. Hello, and welcome to a special edition of the Lady Wrestler podcast. This podcast expounds on issues explored in the documentary, Lady Wrestler, the amazing untold story of African-American women in the ring. I'm Chris Bournet, and I directed the documentary. This is a tribute to the late wrestling legend, Ethel Brown, who passed away earlier this week at the age of 90. I'm recording this podcast on Saturday, July 24th, 2021. Here's an excerpt from Ethel's obituary in Slam Wrestling that was written by Greg Oliver. She was born Ethel Craig and grew up poor in Columbus, Ohio. At five foot two and 130 pounds, Brown wrestled for roughly eight years from 1949 to 1956, starting at the age of 18. I'll put a link to the Slam Wrestling article in the description. And also for a more complete picture of Ethel Brown's life, I would highly recommend you check out the documentary Pin Down Girl, which was directed by Ethel's very talented daughter, Fife Ashenbrenner. I have the privilege of meeting Ethel Brown um, and interviewing her for the Lady Wrestler documentary. And I remember traveling to her home in Atlanta in the summer of 2010. And it was really great talking to her. She was so sweet and so gracious. And one of the things that we bonded over was both being natives of Columbus, Ohio. So here's a clip from the Lady Wrestler documentary in which she talks about her experience growing up in Columbus a big country town and I was called a hick. Uh, anyone that came from Columbus was considered a hick, I guess, or a buckeye. You know, one of the things about Ethel Brown that really stood out is that she was ahead of her time in terms of race relations. She was Caucasian, but she really, um, she sort of went out of her way to befriend her African-American peers in the wrestling industry, especially Babs Wingo and Ethel Johnson two sisters who were among the first African-American women to integrate pro wrestling. And here's another clip from the documentary in which Ethel Brown talks about befriending Babs and Ethel. And of course, Ethel Brown and Ethel Johnson, one of the things that they had in common, other than a love for wrestling and being really athletic, was that they shared a first name. So here is Ethel Brown talking about her friendship with Babs Wingo and Ethel Johnson. Some of Billy Wolf's wrestlers were threatened by new girls who stepped into the ring. But Babs and Ethel were befriended by a young Caucasian wrestler who, by coincidence, also happened to be named Ethel. Because we were new, probably the old girls didn't really want that much to do with us. They would answer questions if we asked them. But they had their own things that they wanted to do. So the three of us would exercise together or work out together in the ring, try something new, uh, give each other advice. When I had the opportunity to interview Ethel Brown at her home in Atlanta, after the interview, she so graciously introduced me to her family. Family was really, really important to her. So here is another clip from the documentary in which she talks about passing on her legacy to her family, to her children and grandchildren. Ethel Brown, who went on to become a registered nurse, has enjoyed teaching her children and grandchildren some of her trademark moves. I did try to teach them, believe it or not, how to do some things. Uh, I wanted them to do nip-ups. A nip-up is where you, like a, it's not a cricket, there's a click bug. It will go down and click back up like that. And that's what a nip-up is. 
you're laying down flat, but you bring your knees back and practically out the boat, click up to a standing position. I tried to teach them that, and none of them could learn it. <laughs> By the time I met Ethel Brown, she was known as Ethel Ashenbrenner. Thank you, Miss Ethel, for everything you did to pave the way for women athletes. And here is one final clip from the documentary in which Ethel sums up her contributions to the wrestling industry and her place in history. Being a legend sort of means something to you. 